Hi, this video is going to be about quantitative genetics, and here's a problem. Two homozygous varieties of Nicotiana longiflora have mean corolla lengths of 40.5 and 93.3 mm. The average of the F1 hybrids from these two varieties was of the intermediate lengths. Among 444 F2 plants, none was found to have flowers either as long as or as short as uh, the average of the parental varieties and uh, you have to estimate the minimal number of pairs of alleles segregating from the F1. And if you know how to solve this problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So before I would show you how to solve this problem, I want to uh, tell you uh, what is the quantitative uh, genetics is about. But first let me remind you what is the qualitative genetics, genetics is. Uh, for example, simple Mendelian genetics is example of the qualitative genetics. And uh, when we have two parents and one can be uh, homozygous dominant for one trait, uh, another parent can be homozygous recessive for the same trait. And for example, if a dominant allele stands for the red color and a recessive allele stands for the white color, homozygous dominant condition uh, means that this parent would have uh, red flowers and this would have white flowers. And when we have uh, uh, heterozygous um, progeny or uh, in F1 generation, uh, we can expect that all of them going to be the same phenotype as this uh, homozygous dominant parent. Because uh, here one allele that is going to be dominant over the recessive allele uh, would uh, be enough to produce um, red pigment and phenotypically all the F1 generation would look the same as uh, parent 1. And when we have quantitative uh, uh, genetics, uh, the picture is uh, a little bit different. So if we have one parent that is going to be uh, homozygous dominant, and another one homozygous recessive and when we cross two such parents uh, their traits are not qualitative but uh, quantitative that means for example we are uh, comparing some qualities of the plants that we can measure for example this can be tallness this can be size of the fruit and for example each allele would be additive to the trait. Uh, for example, a uh, dominant allele would add to the trait 2 cm, for example, for the um, tallness, and uh, recessive allele would add uh, 1 cm. And what we can expect here, we can expect uh, once again all the heterozygous uh, genotypes, but this time we would see here three centimeters uh, intermediate um, uh, size of between these two parents. So this parent would be, for example, four centimeters tall. This would be uh, two centimeters tall, and this uh, intermediate would be uh, three centimeters. This heterozygous genotype would be three centimeters tall. So this is uh, my difference between qualitative and quantitative traits. And uh, here is uh, explanation how we are going to solve today's problem. We told here that we have two homozygous varieties. And what does it mean? That uh, homozygous means that such a variety would be pure line or pure breed or uh, in other words this is going to be 
um, self-pollinated for many generations and all the heterozygosity would be lost so each uh, locus would be homozygous it can be homozygous dominant and it can be homozygous recessive and uh, when we have uh, two such parents uh, we expect that uh, all the uh, F1 generation would be heterozygous as in this example and uh, as you see according to our problem uh, we have to um, self-pollinate F1 generation in order to produce F2 generation so let's do it and uh, as you see uh, all of the uh, all uh, F1 generation is heterozygous and when we cross two heterozygous parents and this is results that we are going to expect so here we may have capital A capital A capital A small a here capital A small a here and small a small a here as you see according to this Punnett square we might get here homozygous dominant uh, homozygous recessive genotype and two that is going to be uh, heterozygous genotypes and uh, when trait is additive that means that this intermediate genotype would be different from uh, both uh, this homozygous dominant and uh, homozygous recessive genotype and uh, as you see this heterozygous genotype uh, would be uh, twice as many as any of these uh, extremes and we would call this extremes and here is why uh, do you remember that uh, a dominant A allele would give us two centimeters and uh, small A allele would give us one centimeter so let's take a look what we have here so here we have uh, two dominant alleles and this give us four centimeters and this two give us two plus one and this means three centimeters and here we have one plus one and this give us two centimeters so as you see this is going to be one extreme and this is going to be second extreme and we are going to have uh, two plants that is going to be uh, three centimeters and if we build uh, such a table we can expect uh, one plant that is going to be two centimeters we are going to expect uh, twice as many uh, plants that is going to be three centimeters and we are going to expect one plant that is going to be four centimeters so four three and two and as you see uh, this is what we are going to expect if we have two uh, heterozygous parents and this is uh, what we expect when we self-pollinate F1 generation and uh, of course when we have more than uh, one allelic pair uh, the segregation would be uh, on the much uh, more scale because uh, if we have uh, a square not uh, two by two where we are uh, going to get four um, uh, cells if we have two allelic pairs to compare so this is going to be square four by four and here we would have uh, 16 uh, genotypes some of them uh, can be the same some can be different but uh, here at the edges we would have extreme genotypes and uh, 
we can represent uh, what we see here uh, on this picture uh, with a formula and of course uh, the more results we get uh, the more uh, this would uh, looks like a bell shape and uh, so the least results uh, for the uh, extremes and more we can expect uh, average and uh, you probably can see it in daily life uh, for example if you take all the peoples uh, in your uh, university school or class uh, you would probably have few people who is going to be very small few people who is going to be very tall but most of the people would be of the average size and uh, this applies to almost anything uh, size of the fruits for example or uh, to any uh, quantitative trait so we can uh, use this formula that is one quarter raised n as you see uh, this genotype here represents one quarter this genotype that is also extreme represents one quarter and this is going to be one allelic pair so we compare uh, we cross uh, only uh, one allelic pair of one parent with one allelic pair of the second par parent so extreme phenotype would be one quarter raised n so if we compare only one allelic pair this would be one so extreme phenotypes would represent one quarter and uh, of course if we would have two alleles so let's uh, write if we have two alleles our formula would look like uh, one quarter raised two so the answer here would be that uh, our uh, extreme phenotypes would equal to uh, 1 16 and uh, if we would have uh, three uh, allelic pairs we expect uh, results to be 1 over 64 and uh, if we have four allelic pairs to compare uh, we have to raise uh, four and uh, results would be that extreme phenotype should be one out of uh, 256 and in our problem here we told that among 444 F2 plants, none was found to have flowers either as long as or as short as the average of the parental varieties. And because we have here one variety that is uh, very short, another one that is very uh, long, F1 generation would be intermediate between them. The size would be intermediate and uh, we have 444 uh, plants in the F2 generation and as you see uh, if we have uh, four genes that uh, control the size of Corolla uh, we would expect that one out of 256 um, phenotypes would represent uh, extreme phenotypes or one of the phenotypes of uh, one of the parents but uh, as you see none of them but this number of course smaller than uh, 444 but if we raise 5 here we would get a, a result that is going to be that extreme uh, phenotype would be 1 out of uh, 1000 uh, 24 uh, but uh, what we have here is also 
number of plants uh, that is smaller. So what we can uh, tell for sure that at least four genes or four allelic pairs uh, control uh, the length of the corolla in this plant and we need more um, data, we need more plants to compare and if for example if we find that uh, uh, one out of a thousand would be uh, the same phenotype as one of the parents to be very short or uh, it can be very tall uh, that means uh, that uh, uh, this trait under the control of five genes but as long as uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, information uh, what we can tell for sure is that uh, at least uh, four genes control the length of the corolla in this plant and this is all for today thank you for your attention Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. I hope if you would find such a problem on your exam, now you would be able easily to solve it. And please write your comments, your questions if you have any. See you in the next video. Goodbye.